One of the topics that is very difficult for students to understand in chemistry is thermodynamics. This is a simple activity that you can do to show students concepts of thermodynamics happening in any kind of activity. What you're going to need is a rubber band, very easy to do, and I'm just going to hold it right there and I'm going to say stretch. Hmm. Stretch. It's not happening. Hmm. Let me try this. I'm going to stretch, pull it out, and say limp. Hmm. Let's try that again. Go limp. What we have are two types of activities the stretch to the limp form or the limp to the stretch form. One of these is spontaneous. Now recognize, spontaneity is not necessarily something that's going to happen just instantaneously. It's just something that's going to happen on its own. So if I would hold this rubber band out here and say stretch, we know that there's no way that that's going to happen on its own. That's a non-spontaneous type of reaction. So the stretch form to limp, that automatically happens. That's spontaneous. So what we have over here on the board is an equation that we're going to use involving Gibbs free energy. Where we're going to do delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Well now let's look at this. The delta G, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the Gibbs free energy to tell if something is spontaneous. I have a little device I use. This is how you make a G. I'm not done. I have one more part. What part do I have to add? That part right there. That's how you form a G, but this is also what you need for a spontaneous reaction. You need a negative sign. Only reactions that are spontaneous are going to have a delta G that's negative. The students typically have trouble discerning the delta G and the cell potential, E. So I use this right here. So now we have to decide in this column which of these was the spontaneous reaction. I had the limp to stretch. Did that work spontaneity-wise? No. So guess what? This is going to have to be a positive value. That is saying it's non-spontaneous. But when I had the stretch, it automatically went limp. That is going to have to be the spontaneous reaction. So we have a negative value there. So we have a simple way of determining spontaneity. If a reaction occurs, it's spontaneous. Now let's do the delta H. What you have here is that rubber band. If you hold it up on your lip and stretch it and then let it go, stretch it, let it go. You might want to try another size of rubber band, just whatever works best for you and the students, but stretch it and let it go. It's amazing what's happening. As I pull it like this, as I'm stretching it, it gets a little hotter. And you can de definitely tell this on your lip portion. It's getting hotter here. So as I'm going from the limp to the stretch form, it's producing energy. So now let's look at energy. I'm going back to the board. We said the form where it went limp to stretch. As I stretched it out, it gave off energy. That's exothermic. What is the sign for an exothermic reaction? Negative, right there. And as it went stretched to limp, couldn't feel anything. It did not get hot. And so, opposite process, that's going to be positive. So from that, we can get some of the signs and from this, we could discern what the entropy is going to be. But we could add another demonstration to that right here. As I go over here, we're going to use this model right here. What I have is a ring stand. I have a little kind of burette clamp or a utility clamp. And I have a rubber band. And to the rubber band, I have a 1,000 gram mass. Now, if you look at this, it's got a little hook on it. And that hook is hooked into the rubber band and then there's a little notch at the bottom of the mass. And all I did is 
took a wood dowel and taped enough of it so it could just fit right in underneath. That's all I did. It just snaps right in. And what I did is set up a scale right here. So what we've got is a crude instrument where we can measure where this rubber band is at. So what I'm going to do now is take a hairdryer, and sometimes you might have to have a hot air gun, but the hairdryer works. And before that, I should always have the student make predictions. What do you think is going to happen? As I add, add heat in an exothermic reaction, what do you think is going to happen to the rubber band? Is it going to expand? Or is it going to contract? Once again, get the students to make predictions. See where their thoughts are before you do it. Get them thinking about all the processes. And so let's try this. I'm just going to take the hot air gun and move it up and down on the rubber band. And watch the scale. Did it move? Did it change at all? Could you folks say anything? We'll try this. And guess what? Rubber bands are also resilient. So, you have another one. We'll try that again. Could you see it move at all? You can? So, just... And the rubber band sometimes has a different elasticity, so you have to set up a new scale. So, I have it just above that... Bottom mark. Let's try to heat. I see it going up, do you? Is that what you thought would happen? Now think about it. The teacher, whatever level you want to teach, you can take this to any level, but you can talk about the polymers of the rubber band and how they're twisting. So now let's look at what's happening. Over here, in this situation, what do we have? Well, we could go through this whole process. In the stretch to limp, we said delta G is less than zero for spontaneity. And we said delta H is greater than zero. What must the entropy be here? If you go by the signs, it's got to be... Delta S greater than zero, doesn't it? And so what's that saying? That in the stretch to limp form, you had it going to greater entropy. Whereas in this case, the limp to stretch form, we had less entropy. It went to a more ordered situation. And you can see that, that what happened is, as we had the exothermic reaction, we had an exothermic reaction that was mimicked by the hot air gun or the dry hair dryer, we were getting what? More order. Those random molecules of the plastic were realigning themselves and becoming more ordered. And so this is a simple way to demonstrate entropy, enthalpy, and Gibbs free energy. 
I recommend trying it in your classroom with your students. They really enjoy it, especially with the rubber band. Thank you.